Biden has run his entire political campaign for 50 years as the family man. Well, I've got news for you, sir. The curtain has been lifting, and that campaign slogan will never work again. We have seen what's going on in your family, and even worse, we've seen how you've been treating us as Gold Star families. And there couldn't be anything more disgusting and cowardly than the way you have treated us. You are a disgrace to this nation. You have no business having ultimate command over our military, and I regret not saying that to your face when I had the opportunity in Dover. I felt it more, light, more important to bite my tongue, but I also had more important things on my mind at that time, like receiving my son's lifeless body stateside. While I stood there on the tarmac, watching you check your watch over and over again, all I wanted to do was shout out, it's too dirty. But out of respect to the other grieving families, I bit my tongue once again. Well, as you could probably tell by now, I'm done biting my tongue. You, sir, stole their lives, their futures, their dreams, and have ripped apart 13 families. You cannot even man up and admit that. That's, oh, man. That's just, that's powerful stuff. That's Mark Schmitz. And he, as the father of Marine Lance Corporal Jared Schmitz, he was one of the 13 U.S. service members killed in that bomb blast on August 26th of 21 during that horrific, catastrophic evacuation in Kabul. And he was in, uh, there was uh, during a discussion with the House Foreign Affairs Committee, a roundtable discussion. And he also had added, nobody's been held accountable. And he said, our, our leader can't even utter their names in public. Welcome back to the program. Top of the second hour. Dana Lash here with you. You can see, I mean, just you can hear it in his voice. You can see it in his face. And he is still justifiably, righteously angry. And he has every right to be. These were his earlier remarks, audio soundbite one. And he needed to, he needed, somebody needs to say it. And if not him, then who? Listen to this. Two years has gone by and where are we? To be frank, we're knee deep in is where we are. Everyone who held a key position in the military still has that position or has been promoted. John Kirby still sits on his perch, which apparently faces the opposite direction from where all the action was. Lincoln continues to delay key evidence by ignoring delay or delaying subpoenas. Not a single general slapped down their stars, which should have happened two years ago when Biden ignored his reliable intelligence. Not a single person has been held accountable. And he's right. Mr. Schmitz is absolutely correct on that. You know, the thing that gets me is these, they knew, I, you know, I was talking with a friend of mine who uh, was, was uh, actually working with some of the families and in with the house, saying that, you know, the, the guy who came towards those gates at that airport, Harmid Karzai Airport in Kabul, where everyone stupidly was relocated instead of just going to, to Bagram, where that was a secure military airport outside of the city so you didn't have all of the urban chaos you know with with uh, and tons of people and buildings and everything else but then they for whatever reason they decided to locate to uh Hamid Karzai airport and my friend was saying that the military members knew this this dude who came and detonated uh he was a known terrorist he was known to be associated with terrorists he was known to be violent he had been scouted before they had seen him previously I guess in kind of like a dry run and so they knew what was coming and that's what guts me and imagine being their parents knowing that their service men and women their children knew what was coming it is one of the most infuriating things. And they were so young. They were between the, they were literally 20 to 23. They were so young. The oldest uh, was Marine Corps Sergeant 
uh, Johanny Rosario Pichardo, who is 25, of Lawrence, Massachusetts. So he was he's the oldest. But mo- the, everyone else, they were between the ages of 20 and 23. I, I mean, you, it was entirely uncalled for. And, you know, to put it in perspective with this, Every, even Mark Milley, and I can't say this enough, and I know I've talked about it before, and if you've heard it, just indulge me. Even Mark Milley warned Biden, don't, you can't, you can't withdraw like this. Because the question was never, Republicans never opposed withdrawal. My gosh, who do you think were the people that were pushing for it first? Uh, The non-neocons and the GOP. It was never an issue of if to withdraw. It was always how, how to best do it. You know, we talked about the, Sounds odd, but it's true. Uh, And talk with Tim Kennedy about this, too. The seasons in Afghanistan. You know, you have opium harvesting season. You go out, you you harvest the poppies, and then you go, they go up to the mountains, and then they stay for winter, and then they come back down, they fight with all each other. And, you know, military, uh, all all military counsel to the White House was, look, this is... This is how you have to approach this. If you're going to do it, this is when you need to do it. This is how you have to do it. You have to leave a residual force. You can't just do a, you know, a fast withdrawal because what's going to happen is the Taliban is going to roll through. Literally exactly what happened. And, you know, I'll add, too, because people keep going, oh, Trump wanted to pull out. He did. Yeah, he wanted to do the same thing. But you know what? There's the difference. When military counsel to him said the exact same thing that they said to Biden, he listened. Wow, amazing. The difference. Wow. And he's like, no, I'll leave, what was it, 13, 12, or, 12 or 1,300 residual force. I think it was 1,300. You know, leave a residual force. And so he did. That's the difference. So if, when people tell you, yeah, but Trump wanted to pull everybody out, yeah, he did. But you know what? When all of the generals and all the experts and everyone else told him, look, you can't do it like that, and here's why, he listened. Whereas Biden was like, no, I'm desperate to have that talking point. I want to have the talking point of being the president that did it. That's literally the only thing that they were concerned about. They, they got 13 military members killed so Biden could have a talking point. There is nothing that should ever cost that. And that's what's so infuriating. So infuriating. The, oh, and then Lorraine and the chat folks, yeah, they bring up a good point. Remember the family that got targeted in retaliation for the airport bombing that had nothing to do with it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Y'all remember that story, right? And there were kids in the car. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's a disaster. I, I, it's a, it's a disaster. I don't know. You know, I, whenever I hear stories like this, you know, you get, I get so enraged because we've had I think I don't know of anybody that doesn't have anyone in their family that hasn't served in the military we have a lot of military folks in our family and then as you get older and your kids get older you know one of one of my sons my oldest son one of his friends went to the marines I'm like oh my gosh like that's I I I, you you start looking at that you add that perspective onto it too and it really just it enrages you and to shut, I mean, honestly, can I just be frank? I, if you shut down Bagram first and you don't make that your, your ex-fill site and you use Harmed Karzai, are you asking for trouble? I mean, I, I'm being genuine here. Are you trying to get people killed? I have no other, I mean, I'm, I'm not being rhetorical. I'm, I literally am asking that because I don't know. It just seems like the dumbest way to do stuff. I am so glad that these parents are saying this. Do you think that any of these parents are going to get their moment on CNN or MSNBC? No. Probably not. Probably not. Um, just, just saying. You know, when Trump had uh, gotten in trouble with some of the remarks that he had said about military, and this was back in 2016, golly, CNN and MSNBC, wall-to-wall coverage. And these were over... A rem- it was over a remark that he had said. Well, here you have 13 deaths. Seems like that's astronomically worse. Nothing from those same networks. They won't give these families time of day. Oh, but they pretend to care, right? They push out certain faces like Tapper and all that. They pretend to care. You know, 
you're not going to get any specials about these. You're not, not going to get any interviews with these parents because they, they're criticized. You can't criticize Biden. You can't. They're all in on protecting him.